Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, YEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Carbopedia, BECE, JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. Welcome to physics class and today I'm bringing you projectile one. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define and give examples of projectile motion. Define terms used in projectile motion and then do some proof of time of flight, maximum height, and the range of projectile motion. If you are ready, let's get started. Look at what you are watching on your screen now. You will see a true picture of what projectile motion is all about. It has to do with a body launched into the air. So there are a few things you have to know about a projectile motion. It's not just about a body thrown or a catapult or a missile launched or a ball pulled, clearance or whatever. All these things are examples of projectile motion. But the question is, do you know the science or the technicalities behind the projectile motion? And that is what we are going to be looking at. If you look at this diagram very well, you see that at this point, Vx is there, Vx is there, and then you see Vy here. And then there is an arrow given in this direction. What they mean, they are, are all what we are going to be looking at. And they also look at this point, what it means, and all sorts. Now, the first thing I want to know, let you know is that, look at the video there. The body was launched into the air, and it takes that path until it strikes the ground again. So that part, or the curve it takes, as the young man is doing the throw, is called trajectory. That is what trajectory is all about. Then, the definition of projectile motion is that projectile motion, or a projectile is a body, launch into the air and allow to move under the influence of gravitational force. So the force of gravity is what makes this body to move in that part. Have you ever asked the question, why must this body move in that curve? If you throw a body at that place you are, just take a pen and throw into the air, why must you follow that curve? Even if you think you want to throw the most vertical body into the air, at a point, it will also bend and fall down. All these are science behind the world. That is why when people talk about physics, it's not just about what you see, what your eyes can tell you. It's about the, the experiment taken on that. And just like Aristotle made a mistake, he said that two bodies a lighter body and a heavier body, when you allow the two of them to fall down, that the, light, that the heavier body will fall down first before the lighter body. That was just what her, his eyes could see. But there are so many things behind what your eyes could see until Galilee took that experiment in Prisca in, in, in France. And it was stated and came to a conclusion that all bodies, irrespective of their mass or weight, fall down with the same um, acceleration. So it's not just about the throw, the science behind it, very important. Now we're going to look at very few of them, like time of flight, maximum range or range, then maximum height, and the range of projectile. Let's look at them. And this lesson is going to focus more on the proof behind them. Now, first of all, the first one we have is time of flight. All right, time of flight. What is the time of flight? This, this question you ask, I can't just answer it outrightly. 
and want to do some analysis for us to be able to understand what time of flight is. Now look at this. But before I start, I want you to know that mathematically, this is the formula for time of flight. The time of flight is given as 2u sine theta divided by g. What, are the mean, what, what is the meaning of t, u, and what? That is what you are going to look at. Now, just hold on for this analysis. Now, all these things I've been saying about projectile motion starts with this fact that a body is launched. Let's talk about position or probably with time, however. Then this is the origin, right? A body is launched into the air. Instead of it to move in this direction and move, what happens? It takes this direction and then goes down. Now, when this body was launched into the air, we have different positions as the body was moving in the air. Different positions. Let me call position A, position B, position C, position D, position E, and finally position F. At every position, what is the time of flight? The time of flight is the time taken to go from the starting point, go this way until it hits the projectile plane again. That is what is called time of flight. Now, how can we now prove the, the time of flight? We are going to borrow our knowledge. We are going to borrow our knowledge and understanding from the vector. Remember, we've treated vector. If you look at any vector just like this, um, this projectile, or because the body is using a U, which is um, meters per second, that U is the instantaneous speed at every point. Now, it use this speed to move, then we have different components because every velocity must have components. This is the angle, theta, which could be 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on and so forth. Then um, this particular speed has its component called vertical component, and it has horizontal component. You are watching it on the screen, it's there. We are by this U on the screen, it is represented as V1. So I'm going to be using U, which is conversant or common to the people in our side. Now, at every point, at every point, let's say, be it this point B, you are going to have this vertical component and horizontal component, and then this U. At every point, you are going to have this vertical component, horizontal component, and this direction. So this is what happens at every point as this body is moving. And because of this vertical component, horizontal component, that is why the body continues moving in this curve, because of a battle between the vertical component. The body was supposed to continue moving up. It didn't. It was supposed to continue moving in this direction. It didn't. Rather, it decided to take this direction. And the speed is changing at every point as the body is going down. Now, the question is, how can we be able to prove the formula for the time of flight? I'm going to borrow it from a vector, like I told you, resultant vector. Now, if I resolve this at this point into vertical component, horizontal component, and then tangential or instantaneous speed with an angle. I am going to now form a kind of triangle. Then let me find what Vy is. That is, 
what is the vertical component? I'm going to resolve this velocity. If I resolve it into this velocity, I'm going to have that this is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. So that is sine theta is equal to opposite is Vy all over hypotenuse is U. Therefore, Vy is equal to U sine sine theta. Why do I need this? Why do I need the vertical component? Let me put it here. The vertical component is U sine sine theta. Why do I need it? Because when we are talking about time, we are talking about the time, I can just, I can, there is nothing I can do now to be able to prove the time it takes to go from this point, let's say point A, all the way to point B. First, what I have to do is, what time did it take to reach this maximum height? What time did it take to reach here? And remember, in our understanding of motion, we now know that, however, it started at this origin, zero, when time is zero. Remember, I am doing this with respect to time. And this is position. At time zero, it continued moving. When it gets to this maximum height, we say that at the maximum height, there is a momentary stop. And because of that, we say that this final velocity is zero. That is the vertical component of the velocity of the body is zero. Remember, there are three different velocities here. Very important. I want you to know this. Vertical component is a, is a speed. Horizontal component is a speed. And this U is also a speed as this body is moving from one point to the other. Now, if you look at the screen very well, you realize that at this point, Vy is there, Vx is there, and this V1 is there, which is representing my U. But why did it get to this point? It's only Vx that we have. We will talk about that. And when it gets here, we also have Vx, Vy, and this V as well. That means at the, at the maximum height, Vy is zero. So we only have Vx left because Vx does not change. Because acceleration due to gravity does not act in this direction, in the horizontal direction. That is why Vx does not change at every given position. It remains the same. However, Vy is the vertical component at time zero. At time zero, Vy is this. But then, if you say at time zero, we are going to say that V is equal to U minus GT. Look at this V now. It's the vertical component. So I'm calling it only V. I'm using this one, UY, to represent this my own. So I'm going to call this place VY. And I'm going to call this one just V because this is the velocity at the maximum height. And I'm going to call this one time at the maximum height. That means this t, small t now, is the time I'm taking to go from zero to this point. So that is my time. How did I get this formula? I got this formula from the first equation of motion, which says that V is equal to U plus AT, which is GT at this point, because acceleration due to gravity is what we are using. This is the final velocity. This is the initial velocity. This is the acceleration due to gravity. And this is the time taken to reach that final velocity. So when I now say that this u, why am I using negative sign? I'm using minus because the body is thrown up, and we are targeting the maximum height. So at maximum height, v is 0. I'm putting 0 here, equal to uy. Vy is u sine theta, and this is going to be u sine theta minus g t, all right? So let me finish it here. Now, if I carry this to this, I have GT is equal to U sine sine theta. You see that now? So T is equal to U sine theta over G. Now, that is the time it takes to go from this position, let's say position A, to position C. This is position C. 
position C is at the maximum height. So when we are talking about time of flight, we are talking about from this position all the way to position B. Now, if from here to here is 2, from here to here is also going to be 2. So from here to here is half. So from here all the way to this point is going to be 2 times from here to here. So this time is A to C. That means from this point A to this point C. So from A to C and from C to B are the same thing. So for me to have the maximum height, the, the time of flight, which is given as capital T, I'm going to have two times this time from A to C. All right? Therefore, the time of flight of a projectile motion is given as two sine, two U sine theta all over G because because this t is from A to C, from A to C. Now, but for me to consider from A back to B, I have to say two times of whatever I got from here to here. And that is how I got this relation as time of flight, which is given on this one as the time of flight. So when we talk about range of projectile, when we are talking about range of projectile, we are talking about the distance from the point where the body was projectile down to the time where the body hits the projectile plane again. So if this is my U, my angle, then the distance from here all the way to this point is called the range. And this is U, and this is Vy, and then this is Vx. Remember, these are the three major speed or velocity associated with projectile motion. Now. Look at this body. There is something we call maximum range. Look at this. When this body was launched, the, the maximum range is the highest distance the body can go, and that is the red one. And that means when you project it at this angle, the body will not go far. That is the distance from this point where the person is launching. It's called the point of launch. Whereby, wherever the body falls on the ground, is called the point where it falls on the projectile plane again. So if you use 10, of course, you stop here. The distance from here to here is not much. If you use 80, that is where it's going to go and falls there. But only 45 degree is the one that will go far. And that is where we call maximum range is when the angle of projection is 45 degree. We are going to do the proof. So at this point, I want to find from the beginning to the end. That is the range from this point to where it falls down. First, if I'm talking about range, I'm talking about the horizontal component of the velocity or the speed. Therefore, I'm going to resolve this vector in the horizontal component. And that is going to be Vx is going to be u cos theta. That is the horizontal component of this speed at time zero. Very important. Now, what is the velocity? The velocity of a, the velocity, or just the velocity, is given as distance over time or displacement over time. Therefore, velocity is going to be range all over time. Therefore, range is equal to velocity of x times time. That is the range. So range is simply the distance from the point of projection to the end. So if this u is the speed 
with respect to the horizontal direction because that's what range is considering. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say that range is equal to Vx is something as u cos, cos theta times time. Remember, if I'm using small t, I am not getting it because when we talk about range, you are talking about the time from the beginning all the way to the end. And that is going to be the time of flight, which is capital T. And remember that the time of flight, or the time of flight here yes, is given as 2u sine theta all over g. And that is what I'm going to write here. 2u sine theta over g. And this over 1. Let us simplify this to see what is going to lead us. If it's going to lead us to the formula. So at this point, I have 2u cos theta sine theta over g is equal to the range. However, this is not the formula for the range. Let me show you the formula for the range as we move to get what it is. Look at the formula for the range. So what can I do to this to be able to achieve that formula? Let me clean this part. Remember, I started with this. This is the range where I started with. So at this point, I have there is a trigonometric ratio that says that 2 sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta is a trig ratio. It came from However, if I do this with this 2 theta, I'm going to have sine theta plus theta, which is going to give me sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta. So sine 2 theta represents 2 sine theta cos theta. So if this is a trigonometric ratio, then what I'm going to do now is simple. I'm going to say that maximum range is not maximum. I mean, range is given as u bracket, this is 2, 2 sine theta cos theta all over g. Remember that 2 sine theta cos theta is the same thing as I've written it. Just multiplication is commutative. So I'm going to have that u is equal to u. Now, also remember that um, in the multiplication of time, remember this. Look at what I'm saying. So maximum range started with um, um, u cos theta and then times 2u sine sin theta over g. So maximum range will be u times u is going to be u square. Then um, 2 sine theta cos theta all over g. So the same thing happens here. However, 2 sine theta cos theta is the same thing as sine 2 theta. So I'm going to put sine 2 theta all over g. And this is the formula for maximum range. So you, you need to understand the principle. The principle is that when we are talking about the maximum range, we are talking about the distance from the beginning to the end. And that helps us to know that we are looking at the most effective velocity, which is the horizontal component, which is Vx. And the Vx is giving us u cos theta. Then we also have t, capital T. Why am I choosing capital T? It's because it is from the beginning to the end. And capital T represents time of flight. And this is the time of flight. 
And the only problem we faced was 2 sine theta cos theta. So in order to remove this ambiguity, we now use a trigonometric identity, which says that 2 sine theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta, which I remove 2 sine theta cos theta and replace with sine 2 theta. And that is how we got this um, formula of range. However, there is a special kind of range which is called maximum range. How then do you have maximum range? You can only have maximum range when you have u square sine 2 theta over 2g at theta equal to 45 degrees, you now have that the range is going to be equal to u square sine 2 times 45 all over g. u square is equal to sine 90 over g is equal to maximum range. And sine 90 is 1. So you have u square over g as the maximum range. So maximum range is given as this. So whenever the angle is 45 degree, the range you have when you launch it at angle 40, 45 degree is the maximum range. Maximum range in the sense that it is the kind of range projectile that will go more farther than all other ones. That is what was represented on this video clip. Now, let's talk about the maximum range. How can we get this formula for the maximum range? So at maximum range, at this particular point where this projectile, projectile motion or the, the projectile has reached before it turned, at that point we said that V is equal to zero. And this is an angle of projection, the angle of projectile. This is a horizontal component and this is a vertical component. And remember that Remember that the vertical component is given as this. I told you that the vertical component is changing. Vertical component of this body, of this projectile, is changing at every point. But the horizontal component does not change, it remains the same. So I'm going to use this formula. I'm using negative because the body was thrown upward. I'm going to use half GT square. So I'm going to say that um, this is giving us u is going to be y, not x. So this u is going to be u sine theta because it is at time zero. Then multiply by t. t is going to be, t is giving us u sine theta over g minus 1 over 2 times g times u sine theta over g, all squared. So let's see if we can arrive at this. So what we have here is this, u square sine square theta over g, this over 1, this times this will give you this, minus 1 over 2 times g over 1 times u square sine square theta over g square. Right? So at this point, I am canceling one of these g. And when I do, I have that um, h is equal to u square sine 2 theta over g minus 1 over 2 u square sine theta over g. OK, so at this point, you have 1 u sine square theta over g minus half u square sine 
square theta over d. So it's simply saying 1 minus half. Of course, it's half. So I am going to finish it up here. So let me remove this. And the best thing I'm going to do is since, since this is a fraction, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to say that, um, yes, this is 1. And everything here is half. 1 minus half is going to give you sine square theta over d. Or you can use um, fractional method to divide. LCM is 2, 2g. 2g divided by g is 1. 1 times this, you're going to have sine square, u square sine square theta minus 2g divided by 2g is 1. 1 times this, you are going to have y. Sorry, it's going to be 2. Because 2g divided by g is going to be 2. 2 times this is going to be this. So this is u square sine square theta, all right? And that is equal to maximum height all over 2g, all right? So maximum height is going to be 2 minus 1, because see, that is imaginary 1 here. So 2 minus 1 is, is going to be 1 u square sine square theta all over 2g. And this is the formula you are seeing on the screen, which represents the maximum height of a projectile motion. We have come to the end of this lesson, but before we go, we are going to take a few exercises on how we are going to apply these formulas to solving problems in an exam guide app. Don't go, just remain with me. So I'm going to be taking a few examples from the ones that can only treat the basics knowledge of this, because we are going to have, there is another video for projectile 2, so I'm not going to exhaust them here for the sake of time. So a ball is released from, all right, I'm not leave, leaving this one. A bullet is fired at an angle vertical, with, okay. Let's take this one. This is the, the UTME uh, exam guide app. So. So a bullet is fired at an angle 60 to the vertical with a speed of 50 meter per second. Determine its maximum height reached. The maximum height reached. We also have another one. We said that a body is projected horizontally with a velocity of 15. This is not a maximum range. At what angle must a bullet be fired? If its range must be equal to the maximum height, let's treat this. At what angle must a bullet be fired if its range must be equal to the maximum range? Now, look at the, the kind of application. So the range is given as u square sine 2 theta over g. And the height is given as u square sine square theta over 2g. Remember, this is 2 theta. So this is range, and this is height. At what angle? In that case, that simply means that the range must be equal to the height. So I'm going to say u square sine 2 theta over g is equal to u square sine square theta over 2g. All right? So I'm going to cancel u square I'm cancel u square. I'm looking for theta. That is what the question is saying. So I'm going to cancel g. I'm going to cancel g. Please, what I'm doing is mathematically correct. It works because there is no plus or minus separating each of these. So that is why I have the right to cancel them when they are in um, different sides of an equation or different right-hand sides. So I have sine 2 theta equal to sine square theta. Now, sine 2 theta is going to be equal to sine theta dot sine theta, because sine theta dot theta is going to give you sine square theta. So um, what I'm also going to do now is to cancel. 
Okay, there is two here. Sorry. So I'm going to multiply two. So two is going to be here. Um, the best thing I'm going to do is to say that, recall the, the rule we applied initially. I said that sine 2 theta is something as 2 sine theta cos theta. Yes, so this is just it. Now, what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to say 2 bracket 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine theta dot sine theta. All right, so at this point, I'm going to have 4 sine theta cos theta equal to sine theta dot sine theta. So sine theta, this is going to cancel. This will cancel this. So I'm going to have 4 cos theta is equal to sine sine theta. So at this point, I'm going to apply the principle of complementary angles. And the principle of complementary angle, the principle of complementary angle stated that cos theta is going to be sine 90 minus theta. So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to say sine 4 sine 90 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Or that, or I'm going to apply this rule anyway. So I'm going to say 4 cos theta is equal to sine theta. I'll divide both sides by cos theta, divide by cos theta. So 4 is equal to tan theta. Correct. So at this point, I'm going to find the angle for, for, for tan theta. I'm going to say angle is equal to 4 inverse. That is that is dividing tan by, on both sides. So divide by tan, divide by tan. So theta is going to be tan inverse of 4. So theta is going to be, let's see. So uh, this is going to give me 75.963, which is approximately 76 degrees. And that is option C. OK, this is a very perfect example as well. So this question says, if a projectile has a maximum, a maximum range of 40 meters, find its speed of projection. Remember that I told you that maximum range is given as u squared over g. So the maximum range is already given as 40. And then I'm looking for u. Yg is 10. So u squared is going to be 400. So u squared is going to take in root of both sides. u is going to be um, the square root of 400 is, of course, 20 meters per second. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that would benefit from it. Bye.